Hi, I'm Ann Werda, and I am the Executive Director of Burpee Museum of Natural History. My name is Josh Matthews. I'm the Englehart Moore Director of Paleontology here at Burpee Museum. Today, Josh and I are really excited to share some features of different kinds of bird beaks. You'll notice that they're really different based on what that bird was doing and where it was living. Tell us about it, Josh. Beaks and birds are really interesting because they tell us about what they're eating and how they're feeding. So if you look at the, the beak of a, a hawk, for example, the front end is really hooked and it's used for tearing and ripping apart an animal. So what you'll find today is the shape of a bird's beak depends on the type of food it eats. Birds have beaks for crushing, eating seeds and grain, piercing and tearing beaks, sifting beaks, probing beaks for getting into hard to reach places, and chiseling beaks. What we're looking at here is the skeleton of a red-tailed hawk and then a fully mounted skin and feathers version of the red-tailed hawk. Notice how much larger the animal looks when it has its feathers on it. Also, look at how clearly we can see his beak. Notice he has no teeth inside that beak, but has a great hooked, ripping edge to his beak. What other birds can you think of that have beaks for ripping and tearing flesh? Josh, can you tell us a few examples? So if you look at the, the bills, the beaks of uh, birds of prey, things, rat, things we refer to as raptors, like uh, great horn, or owls in general, hawks, eagles, um, peregrine falcons, you'll notice uh, they have special adaptations in their beaks and their feet. Uh, their beaks are these really robust structures with large curvature, really pointy, kind of designed for ripping apart their prey. If you look at their feet, they got these large talons with that first digit uh, close to the inside, typically larger than the other uh, claws um, on, the, on the feet. And those are used for grasping the prey, and that sharp beak is used to get down and either kill the prey or ripping it apart so they can consume it. So the red tail hawk here, actually, when they taxidermied I mean her, she had a full snake, the whole thing, six inch snake in her belly. Some animals might not wrap, rip it apart. They might just swallow it whole. They might kill it. What do you think? Um, uh, for the most part, I mean, uh, it, it's going to depend, I guess, the size of the prey. Um, if it's if it's a large enough um, animal, for sure they're going to have to um, tear it apart and rip it. If it's a big enough animal, um, they may be able to swallow them whole. Um, but typically, they're just going to grab, tear, swallow, grab, tear, swallow. Um, so, and what's cool about this guy is you can this the red tail hawk. We got a, a taxidermied mount here and a skeleton, a skeleton here, so you can really get an idea of. Um, what you don't see if you just have a skeleton. So if you come across a skeleton, um, sometimes it is, it, it's difficult to see. Um, you have a skull of something, is it an owl, is it a, a hawk? Um, and it, again, it's difficult just based off of size until you see one with the feathers and see with the skin on it to see how much um, size difference there is between the actual animal, how much muscle and feathers adds to the size of the in individual. Now, if you look at a duck, a duck is very different. The duck has a flattened, more uh, spoon-like beak, and that's used for sieving microorganisms and plants out of the water. These are puddle ducks, things like this shoveler here. Um, they'll turn upside down, they'll swim underneath the water, they'll grab uh, muck or mud from under, on the, the bottom of the lake, bring it up, and they'll filter that uh, stuff out of their beak to get to the animals and the plants that are in that mud or at the surface. Um, now, if you look at this penguin, penguin's beak is much more uh, streamlined. It's thin, it's narrow. That's typically for eating fish and organisms. As they're swimming through the water, they open that beak and they can grab fish. Uh, a lot of your fish-eating uh, dinosaurs as well will have these long, narrow beaks, uh, similar to things like this loon here or this penguin. And again, that's a, an indicator that these animals likely fed on fish. These animals, the loons and the penguins, occupy a similar ecological niche, uh, meaning they, they occupy a similar part of the habitat, only in different parts of the world. Whereas the loon is swimming in freshwater lakes, sometimes rivers, where the penguins are swimming in the open ocean. But they're both feeding on fish in their environment. So that's how that beak is developed, that long, narrow, robust beak developed for eating and consuming fish. However, if you look at these mergansers, this here is a hooded merganser, or this common merganser, you can really see it well in the common merganser, their beaks are actually serrated. They aren't actually individual teeth, as we know teeth like in our mouths. However, the beak has developed these serrations. Again, it's got that long, narrow snout, like I mentioned in the loon and the penguin. So these are adapted for eating fish as well. The serrations allow the 
the serrations allow the duck to grab the fish. If a fish wiggles, it can't escape because those serrated uh, beaks allow, prevent them from getting, getting away, prevent them from escaping. So what we're seeing here is a lot of really cool adaptations of bird beaks to help them to be best suited for success in their environment. Josh, can you share with us a different kind of beak that shows a different kind of adaptation? So this beak here in this glossy ibis uh, is another example of adaptation. Um, you can see that really, really long curving, curving beak. These guys typically are shorebirds, so they're living near uh, shorelines, whether it's a lake, a river, a stream, or the ocean, and they use that long bill to stick it in the sand and filter out little critters that are living in the sand. And again, similar to these other birds, such as the loon and the penguins, where they're long, but again, this is much longer, much more specially adapted for a specific environment. Again, in this case, these guys are shorebirds. They use those for digging in the sand and trying to get out little critters and other microinvertebrates that are in the sand. Hummingbirds are another bird that have bills specifically adapted for one purpose, and you'll notice they're very long, very skinny. These are for getting inside of flowers. They'll stick their bill in these flowers, their tongue will go out, and they'll suck up all the nectar that's in those flowers. So if you look at the beak of this cardinal, you notice it's much different than something like the loon or the hawk. Um, it's, it's relatively short, however, the upper part of the beak and the lower part of the beak are relatively broad. So I mean, short and fat kind of beaks. And these are for crushing seeds. This is a cardinal. Cardinals are mainly seed eaters. Um, you see these at your bird feeders all the time here in northern Illinois in the Rockford area, picking up these big seeds. Those are used to crush the shell, this, to crush the shell to get the seeds inside. So this really short, robust beak. You see these in a lot of songbirds, uh, things like cardinals, finches, uh, these gross beaks. They have these really broad, short beaks developed for cracking seeds. Check out this cedar waxwing. It has beautiful colors, but it also has a triangular shaped short beak that packs a lot of power for cracking seeds. This is a blue jay. Blue jays have black, triangular shaped beaks for cracking nuts and seeds as well. They'll eat berries, acorns, and sometimes even small insects. This is a ringed necked pheasant. These guys also eat grain and seeds, but they also forage for insects. So this here is a red-bellied woodpecker. Uh, much like these other animals, a much different part of the ecosystem they're occupying. They, they have these long narrow beaks, very similar to the loon or these other animals that ate fish. However, these animals are developed for eating insects in wood. So I'm sure you're all familiar with woodpeckers. These guys crawl up the sides of trees. They listen for insects crawling around inside the bark. And then they hammer the tree with their heads. Their heads are developed to withstand the forces associated with pounding these trees. So if you're ever out in the forest or ever out in the woods walking around and you hear a big hammering sound, it's typically a woodpecker of some sort hammering into these trees, trying to get insects living inside the tree or in the bark. This is a very special pair of woodpeckers. These are ivory-billed woodpeckers. Burpee Museum is lucky to have a male with the red and a female with the black head. These woodpeckers are extinct, so you will no longer find them in the forests of North America. Now it's your turn to make an inference. I'm going to show you a couple different birds and you're going to try to determine what this bird probably eats based on the way its beak looks. What do you think this pelican would eat? If you said he uses his bill to scoop up fish, you'd be right. What about this amazing spoonbill? He stands in shallow water and sweeps his open bill from side to side to catch fish, mollusks, snails, and sometimes even insects. What do you think about this woodpecker? You would be right if you said he has a chiseling beak to break into wood. What about this Carolina parakeet? This is actually an extinct species of bird and it uses its strong beak to break nuts, seeds, and fruit. What about this pigeon? You'd be right if you guess seeds. Check out this amazing red-winged blackbird. What do you think he eats? You're right, he has a beak for crushing seeds. What about this crow? He's got a strong triangular beak, also for crushing seeds and grain. What about this great horned owl? That beak is for tearing and ripping meat. Great job. 
I hope you've enjoyed learning about beaks with Burpee Museum.